Canada Conversations are a creation of IOM, made available under the Creative Commons 3.0 IGO. Please refer to the text of the audiobook for the copyright mark and the full legal code. Funded by Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada. Financé par Immigration, Refugees et Citoyenneté Canada. O Canada Conversations, Dialogue Number 8. Healthcare Services. The following dialogue is related to Unit 5 Health from the Canadian Orientation Abroad Participant Workbook. For more information, refer to the following units of the Canadian Orientation Abroad Participant Workbook. 5.1 Public Health Care in Canada. 5.2 Interim Federal Health Program. 5.3 Where to go for different health care services. 5.9. Preventing health issues with hygiene. In this dialogue, a Canadian Orientation Abroad facilitator explains the publicly funded health care services and the interim federal health program during a Canadian Orientation Abroad session. Obasi talks with Sadia about his worries regarding medical complications with his wife's pregnancy. The Canadian Orientation Abroad facilitator... Ali, Sadia, Obasi, and other refugees are in the Canadian Orientation Abroad Session Room. A childminder takes Sadia's and Obasi's children to the childminding room until the session is over. The facilitator tells the attendees they can talk amongst themselves for a few minutes before the Canadian Orientation Abroad Session begins. Hello, Obasi. How are you doing? I am good. But my wife, Lena, still needs more time to recover with the baby, so I am a bit worried. Oh, no. I am so sorry to hear that. Do you think she will recover by the departure date? I will follow the doctor's advice. I hope so. I see. Today's session is about publicly funded health care in Canada. Yes. I will pay close attention. Excuse me, everyone. Oh, it looks like the session is about to begin. The Canadian Orientation Abroad facilitator starts the session. Welcome to this Canadian Orientation Abroad session, everyone. Today, we will talk about publicly funded health care services. Can anyone tell me what health care services are? Yes. You have your hand up. Healthcare services would be things like doctors or hospitals, right? That is right. Doctors and hospitals are great examples of healthcare services. Dental care and ambulance services are also healthcare services. Are they all available to us? Each province and territory offers publicly funded healthcare services to its residents. As a permanent resident, you will eventually have access to these services. Coverage varies from one province and territory to another. Is it expensive to see doctors or get medical treatment in Canada? When you access medical services in Canada, you usually do not have to pay for them directly. These publicly funded health care services are funded by the taxes people pay. What are services that I have to pay directly? Healthcare services that people sometimes need to pay for directly include prescription eyeglasses, dental care, prescription medications, ambulance services, and home care for people with specific medical needs. When you or someone in your family starts working, Ask your employer if they offer additional health coverage for services that are not covered in your province or territory. I see. I am glad I can seek medical assistance. Hopefully, I will find a job and be covered for other services as well. When I want to see a doctor, are there any papers or cards I need to show? To use publicly funded health care services, you will need a health card. You will have to apply for a health card from the province or territory where you live. 
Getting a health card may take some time. Ask your government-funded organization or sponsors to help you apply for your health card as soon as possible after you get to your final destination. What if I need to see a doctor before I receive the health card? When you arrive in Canada, you will get a certificate for health care through the Interim Federal Health Program. You will receive this document upon your arrival at the airport, along with your permanent resident documents, from the immigration officer who interviews you. Keep this document safe. What does the Interim Federal Health Program cover? The Interim Federal Health Program covers essential medical services until you get your health card and can access publicly funded health care services. It also covers additional medical services while you are receiving financial support from the government or from your sponsors. So, first we will get an Interim Federal Health Program certificate, and then we will get a health card later? Yes, but it will depend on where you live. In some provinces or territories, you will need to live there for a certain amount of time before you are eligible to receive a health card. That is why there is the Interim Federal Health Program which provides you with emergency coverage if you need to wait. I'm relieved we are covered from the day we arrive in Canada. The Interim Federal Health Program, or Publicly Funded Health Care Services, cover visits to a family doctor, hospitalization and surgeries, medical tests, emergency care and vaccinations. The Interim Federal Health Program makes sure you are covered for these services from the start. Through the program, you will also receive additional coverage for health services that are not covered under your provincial or territorial health care services. What are the extra medical services that I get with the Interim Federal Health Program? You will receive additional coverage for health services that are not covered under your provincial or territorial health care services, including limited vision care, such as prescription eyeglasses, urgent dental care, mental health services, other services like ambulance, prescription medications, and interpretation services. This coverage will keep going even when you are covered by provincial or territorial health care services. It is valid until you are no longer being financially supported by the government or by your sponsors. After your coverage ends, you will need to pay for these additional medical services. So, those services you just mentioned are the ones we have to pay for? once we are no longer covered by the Interim Federal Health Program? That will vary depending on the province or territory that you live in. For more information, ask your government-funded organization or sponsors, or visit your province or territory's website. Some provincial or territorial health care services fully cover these types of services, while others partially cover them, or do not cover them at all. That said, in some provinces or territories, some people can get prescription medications and dental care at a lower cost or for free. Ask your government-funded organization or sponsors about it. How can we show that we are covered by the Interim Federal Health Program? You will get your certificate when you arrive in Canada, keep this document safe. Okay, that is good to know. While I have an Interim Federal Health Program certificate, can I just show up at any doctor's office to get the health services I need? Not exactly. You first need to ask if a particular medical service is covered. Then you need to search 
for interim federal health program registered health professionals. If not, you may need to pay for it or wait until you have access to your provincial or territorial health care services. Your government-funded organization or sponsors can help you find out what services or products are covered through the Interim Federal Health Program. You can also find the list online. I see. We have to present our Interim Federal Health Program certificate when we get there, right? That is right. When you visit the health care provider, make sure you bring your certificate with you. You should present your certificate to a registered Interim Federal Health Program service provider each time you need a service or a product so that they can confirm your coverage. Okay. Can you tell us more about what types of health care services are available in Canada? Sure. Various health care providers in Canada offer different services. Some of them are 1. Family doctors 2. Walk-in clinics 3. Community health centers and 4. Hospitals What do you mean by family doctors? Family doctors provide general health care advice and treatment. They can refer you to see a specialist. Specialists are doctors who concentrate on specific health issues and have training in that area of medicine. If you go to a family doctor, you should bring along any previous medical records you have. You can show the medical tests and vaccinations you got before arriving in Canada. How do I find a family doctor? Finding a family doctor takes time in Canada. Ask your government-funded organization or sponsors about this as soon as you arrive in Canada. In the meantime, if you have a non-urgent health concern and need to see a doctor, you can visit a walk-in clinic or a community health center. What is a walk-in clinic? A walk-in clinic is where you go when you have a non-life-threatening medical problem, when you do not have a family doctor, or when your family doctor is not available. You generally do not need an appointment to visit a walk-in clinic. And what is a community health center? A community health center is a place where people residing in a certain area can go see family doctors and nurses. What about hospitals? Yes, there are hospitals which are larger health care centers. That is where you go if you have a serious health issue and need testing or surgery. Who can repeat the four types of health care providers we just discussed? Hmm. You mentioned family doctors. And community health centers. Yes, very good. What else? Walk-in clinics and hospitals? Great! You remembered all four. Are there any other questions? What if my child or I have a medical emergency? and need to be treated right away. Is there a certain place we go to, or do we just go to a family doctor? If you have a medical issue that needs urgent attention, you should go to an emergency room. The emergency room is the area of a hospital where you go if you have a serious and immediate health issue. Depending on the health issue, you can go there on your own or you can call 911 to take you there by ambulance. What do you mean, call 911? In Canada, if you have a serious emergency 
and you cannot get to the emergency room yourself, you can call 911 from a telephone and an ambulance will come and take you there. That is good. What is an example of a serious health issue where you would need to go to the emergency room right away? If someone has a heart attack? Yes, if someone has lost consciousness or they have stopped breathing, call 911. Do you have another example? If someone is seriously injured? That is correct. If you think someone is seriously injured, for example, if they are losing a large amount of blood, you would need to get them to the emergency room. My son has a chronic illness and will need to get treatment in Canada. Where do we go for this? There are doctors that are specialists who concentrate on specific health issues. Depending on your son's condition, you may need to see a specialist. How do I see a specialist? First, go to a family doctor. They will refer you to the right specialist for your son. But this can be a slow process. Non-urgent referrals to these doctors might take several months. What if I have a problem with my teeth? I have tooth pain that I need to get checked. You can go see a dentist for any problem with your teeth. But remember that the cost of most of these services may not be covered by publicly funded health care. However, some public health care plans cover some urgent dental surgery if done in a hospital. You will be covered for urgent dental care through the Interim Federal Health Plan during the time you are getting financial support from the government or your sponsors. So talk to them about any urgent medical needs as soon as you arrive. I will. When you or someone in your family starts working, ask the employer if they offer additional health coverage for services that are not covered in your province or territory. Sometimes you can get dental care coverage through an employer. As a family, do all family members share the same health card? Each family member will get their own health card to access publicly funded health care services. Each person must use their own health card. Do not lend your card to anyone else. You will need to show your health card every time you get health care services. I see. Can anyone tell me who can help if you have emotional pain? I guess a friend or family member? That is true. But sometimes your emotional health needs may require the help of a professional. Your emotional health is just as important as your physical health, and the two are related. If emotional pain starts to affect your daily life, there are mental health professionals who can help you. These are called mental health services. Do not hesitate to see a mental health professional if you feel emotionally ill. Very good. In Canada, you decide who gets to know about your personal medical information. It is not shared with others unless you say that it can be shared or you tell them directly. It is your responsibility to make decisions about your health and advocate for yourself. That is good to know. Do you have any other questions? Yes. I would like to know about medications. Where do we go to get those? For medications, you go to a pharmacy where you can buy prescription medications and other health care products like personal hygiene products. The pharmacists are also health care professionals who can answer your questions about medication. 
Some pharmacies also give vaccinations. What is prescription medication? In Canada, there are laws and regulations on medication to make sure they are safe. Some medications can be bought in stores by anyone. But other medications require a prescription from a healthcare professional and can only be bought at the pharmacy. When you get a prescription order from a healthcare professional, you must bring it with you to the pharmacy and present it to the pharmacist. Sometimes you will need to pay for prescription medications. If you get a prescription for medication but you still have questions, it would be good to ask your government-funded organization or your sponsors for help. The Interim Federal Health Plan covers the cost of prescription medications while you are receiving financial assistance from the government or a sponsor. After your coverage ends, you will need to pay for prescription medicine. Does this answer your question? Yes, thank you. Now, let us talk about preventative health practices and hygiene. As you may know, Good personal hygiene is important to protect yourself and others from illness and diseases. What are good personal hygiene practices we can all follow? To prevent tooth decay and bad breath, I brush my teeth two to three times every day and floss on a regular basis. That is very good. Can anyone think of other good personal hygiene habits? Try not to share clothing, brushes, or towels with other people. Yes, that is a good one. It helps reduce the spread of things such as lice. Also, if I'm feeling ill, I use a face mask and cover my mouth when I cough or sneeze and wash my hands afterwards. Excellent. Washing hands? Make sure to wash your hands often. Washing your hands helps reduce the spread of COVID-19, influenza, diarrhea, and other parasites. You should wash your hands regularly with soap for at least 20 seconds, especially after using the toilet or before preparing food. Yes, we learned about the importance of good hand washing practices. Great! Before we end, let us do an activity. I will ask you a few questions about medical care and health, and you can tell me if they are true or false. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, here is my first question. Is it true or false that in Canada, you can choose whether you want to have children and how many? I would say that is true. True. It is your body and your choice. If you have questions about family planning, you should talk to a doctor. Here is my second question. True or false? Babies that are naturally born with mixed sex characteristics must undergo surgery. This one is difficult. What do you mean by mixed sex characteristics? That is when a baby is born with a combination of male and female anatomy. Would a child with mixed sex characteristics have to undergo surgery so that they would have more male looking or female looking anatomy? Ah, I see. In that case, I guess so? No, this statement was false. In Canada, babies naturally born with mixed sex characteristics usually do not have surgery, unless it is medically necessary for the life of the baby. Okay, that is good to know. Here is my third question. True or false? Is it legal for a person to have surgery to affirm their gender identity if it is different from the sex they were assigned at birth? 
Can you give us an example? Sure. Let us talk about a person named Roberto, who is 19 years old. When Roberto was born, based on his appearance and how his body was formed, the doctor determined he was a female. Roberto was given a female name and was treated as female in his society. But Roberto does not identify as female, despite being born with female sex characteristics. Roberto has a feeling that he is male, which we call gender identity. Could Roberto choose to have surgery to affirm his male gender identity? You said that in Canada it is your body and your choice, so I will say that is true. That is correct. Great job. Question 4. Where do you go to buy diapers for children and older people? Well, before you said, personal hygiene products can be bought at the pharmacy. Does that include diapers? Yes, very good. Diapers for children and older people are important for personal hygiene. So are pads or tampons when menstruating. These can be bought at the pharmacy and are regularly changed at home or in designated places, such as public toilets. That is good to know. Now, for my last question. When will you receive your Interim Federal Health Plan Certificate? And how will you get a provincial or territorial health card? I will get my Interim Federal Health Plan Certificate when I arrive in Canada. Correct. You will receive it at the airport. What about the health card? We need to apply for a health card as soon as possible after arriving in Canada. Brilliant. Remember that when you receive your health card will depend on the province or territory you are living in. You have done well. Good job. Are there any more questions? No, this is good for now. We have discussed many things. Thank you. All right. Great. End of Dialogue Unit